I want the funk, the whole funk, nothing but funk. Here at Bigger Funky Productions Video Game Live with Funk Master V, musician, ghost hunter, hat flipper, pro wrestler, and comedian takes you on a whirlwind tour of all things funky when it comes to the Atari 7800 and new stuff too, like Nintendo Switch and all the funky stuff coming out into the future, baby. You ready to get your groove on because it's about to get funky up in here. All right, true believers, we're going to go through, I think, I have a hundred and twenty-one Atari 7800 games. There was 57 released, which means I've got a crap ton of aftermarket stuff and stuff that I'm probably not supposed to have. And we're going to go through it today. It's going to be beautiful. All right, here we go. We got a lot of, to get through, so we're just going to jump right into it. And these are in random order. All right, what we got there? We got Time Salvo, which I just reviewed on Atari7800forever.com. Very cool game. This box uh, art is fantastic. Terrible title, but it's similar to Robotron. I've got it in the, the nice little plastic sheath. Midnight Mutants. An RPG game, original release. Um, Al Lewis, Grandpa Munster, similar to Legend of Zelda, but a lot weirder and uh, funnier. A lot funnier. Fatal Run, best ending in the library. Check that out. Cool kind of post-apocalyptic... Uh, Stuff there. Basket Brawl, one of my favorites. It's a sports hybrid there. It's uh, fighting and basketball, a lot of fun. It's got a guy named Vinny, spelled like the way I spell it. I just got this. Look at that, the Ghost Sub in the Box. Brand new release, $27 from Atari 26 land.com I think it's the website I'll fix it if that's up. all right here's the infamous Ricky and Vicky there's a lot of stuff in this this is actually kind of heavy there's so much they put a lot of little extras in there patches and stickers and I don't know handguns I don't know what's in here but uh that's kind of a puzzle uh, adventure game it's unbelievable how it looks I haven't really played it very much to be honest it kind of intimidates me I know that's weird Kung Fu Master, very cool box, and a lot of people don't dig this game very much, but the box looks great. It's a pretty good game. It's not terrible. Made by Absolute. Seven so far. Alien Brigade, a lot of people love this game. Great box art. It's a very fun game. Beatable. Pretty good ending. Really fun game. And it's coming out of the box. Motorcycle! Check that guy out. That is a really cool game. At least the box is. The game's okay. Racing, hills, motorcycles. I wish they would have had uh, fighting in this. With motorcycle, you'd think there'd be a lot more somebody getting hit with chains, like Road Rash. But not to be. But Super Circus Atari. There's a clown giving you the money shot for free. Uh, this game is tough to deal with. This is a difficult homebrew by Bob DeCrescenzo. Great box art, though. I dig the uh, multicolor. There's 10. 10 down. Here we go. We're going to look at some, some loose carts for a moment. There's Draker Quest 2 from our friend... Franco Dragon, Clark Otto Jr. Uh, this is an adventure game. His games are like an acid trip. All the enemies run around and crazy go nuts. But uh, there's Drake Quest. You can beat that one. Um, I don't have the box for this, but I should get it. Dungeon Stalker. It's a version of Night Stalker. It's a homebrew. I can't remember who programmed it. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's a very good. He did a very good job. Awfully proud of him. There's two. 
Baby Pac-Man. I got this sent to me for free by Pac-Man Plus, which that means... I wish he would autograph that, actually. That would have been really cool. Baby Pac-Man. A hybrid of uh, pinball and uh, a regular maze game. Really cool. I need a box of this one, too. This is another Bob Day Crescenzo game. Uh, so was Baby Pac-Man. But that's uh, Crazy Bricks. He loves these brick-busting games. And there you go, Crazy Bricks. Good game. Here's the uh, Video 61 monitor cartridge that was made by Harry Dodson. There's a little switch here on the side, a little funky. Um, this is basically a test cart. I don't know a whole lot about this. I used to, and then I forgot because I suck. But uh, that's hard to get now. But I'm not even sure if the switch does. Maybe somebody smarter can put that in the comments. Pack Nester. This was a German-made game. This is a Pac-Man hack based on some sort of cartoon. It's big in France, I think. So there it is. This is a special edition, actually. And that means... I have no idea. Scramble. I need a box. I like the box for this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some of these homebrew boxes. But that's another Bob Day Crescenzo special, and this is a freaking great, great version of Scramble. All right, here is. Let's see if I can open it. I've never opened this. This is the uh, diagnostic test cartridge that you hear a lot about. I'm not going to open it because it's, I don't know. That's, that's really rare these days, as they say. So we're going to continue on the hit parade here of loose games. This is a, just uh, the prototype of Gatto, which is Spanish for cat. There's a cat on the front, but it's a sub game, not finished. Don't know why I paid full price for this, but it looks cool. Can't really play it. The first homebrew that you could purchase for the Atari 7800 was Harry Dodson's Combat 1990. And you can see I'm number 15, Vinny Vineyard. My own name is on the cart. Isn't that cool? It's old school, baby. Still smells good. So this is uh, another game by Bob Day Crescenzo. And people love this game. He loves asteroids and... Uh, his love for the game came through on this. Very good. Very good stab at that. Another one of Bob's. Crazy Otto. I think Crazy Otto. And I like, there's a lot of information there. That Crazy Otto was one of those uh, illegal Pac-Man game. Pac-Man games. Can't talk today. It's snowy outside. I guess my tongue is frozen. Groovy B made a game called Wasp with an exclamation point. You don't have to yell. That's a home brew. Looks like a gargamel being chased by bees. And it's called Wasp. I don't know. Maybe those are what wasps look like. But I always thought the black and the yellow were for bees. Then he followed that up with this. Yeah, he followed this up with Worm! Oh, damn! Dropped it. Ah, this one's interesting. It's another one of Bob's, but this is a dual pack, man, where you get to be the ghost. If two people are playing, somebody can be Pac-Man, somebody can be the ghost, and I cannot get this thing to work quite right. What are you going to do? And I don't mean it's the program's fault. I just don't understand how you control the ghosts. Here's a label I made for my possible mission cart. Um, it's got like an Atari 7800 joystick blowing up because everybody knows that impossible mission is uh, unbeatable because of a programming bug and they didn't even freaking care to fix it. But somebody ported over the PAL version to America and... Uh, this was about 15 years ago, and we, as Americans, we can beat this really good game for the first time over here. Possible mission. Bada boom. 
Let's do some more loose carts. They're serious. I am serious. This was a prototype. So this isn't a homebrew or an original release game. This is a prototype that was released on cart. Um, that is a shooter. It's very good and it's nearly completed. And if you play it, you won't even know that it's not, not completed. It's a pretty tough game too. Froggy, this is one of, um, this is, I can't, I can't pronounce the guy's name, but Matthias uh, made Santa Simon years ago, and then he spent 11 years making Froggy, which is a a port of Frogger, and uh, he didn't, you know, we leave it as Froggy so he doesn't get sued, I guess. But this is an excellent version if you like Frogger. You can't beat that game. All right, my buddy, uh, I can't remember the guy. Is it, ah, what is his name? It's... S-I-C-O-2, I can't remember his name. He made this game called Shoot the UFO. It's a lot like Astro Smash for the Intellivision, bright colors. Not a lot to this game, but it is a game. I'm going to save that one. Oh. All right, here's Donkey Kong PK. Now, there's two cards you could get that are basically the same game. One is Donkey Kong XM, and one is Donkey Kong PK. Now this is this is an aftermarket game. This is not the original release, um, but this was improved graphics, improved gameplay, improved sound. That's what the PK means. It's a pokey chip is in here, so the sound is much better. Uh, there's an XM version that can you can put this with the XM module once they release that, if they ever do. Uh, <clears throat> this is a very good version of the game. It's got the conveyor belt scene. It's unbelievable. That's that's an amazing game. We're at 30. Ken Siders, God rest his soul, made this game called Beef Drop. And that's what we'd call a fart in middle school, but uh, this is burger time, really. And this is, there's a Beef Drop VE version, which is a value edition. This is not that. This is one that actually has a pokey chip in it. So it's got the swanky sounds of the pokey chip instead of the uh, Atari 2600 sound. And I've got a number on the back seven. I got the seventh one of these guys. All right, we're at 31. Another one of Frank Otto's crazy game, or Frank... Uh, Franco Dragon, Hardy Manslapper. There's a lot of stuff going on there. There's a carrot with a cleaver, and I'm not sure if that's a dildo or a poop. I'm not sure. It's some sort of food, I'm sure. And a ham, smoking a pipe. Hardy Manslapper from Minty Door Soup. This is a game where you go inside somebody's body. I actually like this. This is probably my favorite game from Franco Dragon. It's nuts. And then there's one called the Chicago Basement. Franco Dragon again. Strikes again, y'all. And that one's got a lot of Chicago-based humor. You can see a deep dish pie, probably an Italian beef sandwich. The guy that screwed up and cost the, the Cubbies playoff run. There's a lot of uh, inside jokes for Chicagoans in the Chicago Basement. Well, let's do some boxes here. All right, and a rare misstep for Atari box art. Normally, Atari box art is unbelievably just breathtakingly beautiful. This one's not. This is Scrapyard Dog. This looks like something that would be created in a middle school art class at a really bad school. Interesting games, a lot like Super Mario Brothers. Um, but Urban Blighted instead of, you know... Imagination fun. <laughs> Robotron. There's Robotron. Good. Zero in and zap them, you a holes. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of hobby programmers make these dual joysticks. Uh, a lot of hobby programmers make these dual stick contraptions for Robotron. You can see them all over eBay and other websites. Pretty cool. 
He's one of the original Joust. Very good version of this game. Touche. Joust was in that book, uh, Ready Player One, if I do, if I recall that correctly. Choplifter! Exclamation point. Got to save 64 hostages. A lot of people crap on this version of Choplifter because it's not as swanky as a Sega Master Systems version or the arcade version. But you got to realize this is based on an old computer version of this game. Sega then took it, the, uh, the franchise over and then made a whole new game. So it's, it's really two different games, even though they have the same name. Barnyard Blaster. Light gun game. You can shoot cramps. That's about all there is to say about that game. Here's some ball blazes. I didn't know I had two of these. Ball blazers. I don't know I'm showing you both. Just to brag that I have two versions of this. One's complete new. Uh, these are being sucked up out in the wild because they have th this game has pokey chips and it's cheaper than commando or it used to be it's getting up there now because they're becoming rare first game by lucas arts or lucas film games um which is the crew behind star wars incredible uh scrolling graphics in this game but unbelievable sound because of the pokey chip the music is really good Here's another light gun game. I like this game even though it blinks when you shoot at the screen and then after a while it gets kind of irritating. Ooh, straighten up, honey, we're at church now. Looky, looky, meltdown. Oh, Commando, very good game. It's also got a pokey chip in it. It's one of two of the original licensed games that had the pokey sound, which I can't really tell a great deal of difference in this game, but <clears throat> Ball Blazer is the other one, which sounds like a really bad 70s porn, but Ball Blazer has a pokey sound. All right. So does Commando. If there was a killer app back in the day for the Atari 7800, it was probably Food Fight. It's the only uh, version of Food Fight you can play at home. It's on the Atari 7800, and it's a very good game. You got to eat a bunch of stuff and get to the. Uh, actually, you got to race across the screen to get to the ice cream cone before it melts. So, uh, and it's got instant replay. One on basketball, y'all. Play dollar a point. Gotta love the uh, backboard shattering scene where the janitor comes out and cusses you. Pole position two. This was the pack in game for the Atari 7800. Weirdly enough, they made box versions of these two. I guess if you broke yours or something. Touchdown football. Absolutely terrible. Asteroids, people love this game. The venerable Atari classic, even though this version doesn't have vector graphics, the rocks look like big giant colored disco balls or marshmallow cereals. And then Dig Dug is a great one. That was one of the original eight, I think, that came out when, when the system launched. And just a fabulous version of that game. Let's go back to some of these loose guys over here. Right, I've got Tomcat here, and I've also got the version that is an error. It says that it's for the Atari 2600 and the 7800 and 2600 mode. This is actually the 7800 version, so it's a label error. That sounds like that would be really expensive and a cool variation, but it's pretty common. This is Cubert, but I guess we call this Bonk or Blink or something like that. Another Ken Siders game. Didn't want to get sued. Probably one of the best games in the system. Another cool artwork, too. Need a box for that one. 
I also need a box for this one. Super skateboarding. Almost won one on eBay and didn't pull the trigger. And every time I do that, I hate myself for it. But this is a, uh, instead of a lot of cool tricks in this game, we try to solve an energy problem at a warehouse on our skateboard. Odd game. It's a maze game. I need a box for this one too. Pete Rose Baseball. I'll gamble you for a box. And some of you guys might have saw this earlier in the year. I got Pole Position 3. Check that out. It is a hack of Pole Position 2. Uh, and I don't like it very much, but it basically turns Pole Position into Enduro where you just keep going and going and going. And they did a couple weird graphical hacks, but it's very glitchy and I would resist. All right, I'm going to do some more loose ones for you. This doesn't count, but the guy that makes Alpha Race gave me this Atari lamp. It's hilarious. You turn it in, there's a giant light bulb. You hit the button, the light bulb comes on. It's supposed to lighten the room up. It doesn't. It's hilarious. I'm not, I guess I can't put that there. Astro Blaster, another Bob De Crescenzo game. I love the artwork. Uh... It's one of them shoot 'em up games, not too shabby. Sentinel, I used to have this in a box before there was a fire, and now I've got this version. This was originally only released in Europe, and then uh, Lee Kruger from Rescue Soft uh, saved this guy for us, and I wish I had the box for this still, because they're going for stupid amounts of money, but it's a light gun game. Uh, and as far as Atari light gun games go, it's pretty good. Oh my goodness. Franco Dragon's back with Roof Pooper. Great thing about Roof Pooper is when the game is over, it says you now poop in jail. Because the game ends when you poop on three cops. Pretty much, <laughs> if you did that in real life, your game would be over. This is another uh, discovered uh, shoot 'em up uh prototype they thought was lost people horsed around with it it's not 100 percent complete but it's so close it's like serious in that way that you can pretty much call it complete it's good good game i'm glad when they find good ones I talked about this earlier alpha race which is a take on omega race it's it's different than omega race i love this game Give it a shot. It's available on one of the websites. I think it's Good Deal Games. Homebrew Heaven, I think you can get this one still. It's not cheap, but it's good. Another one of those weird games you can get on one of those websites. The E.T. Book Cart 7800. Uh, it's a really weird thing. It's got a trivia game inside, interviews. It, there's no game in this, and it's very strange. And expensive for what it is. And it's talking about expensive, there is the granddaddy of them all, the most rare game in the system, Tank Command. Originally licensed. Terrible game. I hate it. <laughs> but it's rare. Mario Brothers, not Super Mario Brothers, but the original. Pretty damn good game. Atari did a great job with these arcade ports from back then. For the most part, speaking of the devil, probably the best game on the system, Miss Pac-Man. Unbelievable good game. Bob Day Crescenzo strikes again with Frenzy, it's maze game. This is really cool because there's two-player co-op mode. There's actually Berserk in this game. You can play Frenzy, you can play Berserk, you can play two people against each other, two people playing with each other, an amazing Amazing system game there. Now he made an Armor Attack 2. Got the box on that. This game, I'm not crazy about. It's an old, old game. And you can tell. He did a great job programming it. But I know people that like it. Those people are weird people. Xenophobe in a box. This thing has skyrocketed on eBay. I used to like this game as a kid, but a lot of people dogged it. Got the alien motif. This is Possible Mission. 
excuse me, Impossible Mission. This game is shot to the roof. This game is the one I mentioned earlier with the bug in it. The bug up its ass where you can't defeat it. Ace of Aces. Best flight simulator on the system. And that's not saying much. Rampage in the box. Check that guy out. A pretty good game there. Almost every city in America is represented in this game. All right. Bentley Bears Crystal Quest. Not the best box art in the world, but probably one of the best games on the system. Bob De Crescenzo Strikes Again makes a, or you may know him as Pac-Man Plus, but this is basically taking Bentley Bear from Crystal Castles and putting him in a Super Mario or Alex Kidd type game. I like this one though a lot because he's got rapid fire crystals. He's got like a, he's got basically a Tony Montoya, Scarface, Uzi of crystals coming out. So if you like your platform games where you guys got firepower, there you go. Now this game I thought was going to suck. This is an Odyssey 2 game. This company got sued. To try, you know, a lot of people back in the 80s were trying to rip off Pac-Man. This, this game though is quite a bit different than Pac-Man. It is a maze game. You are eating things. It's a weird, funny-looking th character, but um, there's a lot of differences to that, which makes this one valuable. And beloved. I need, isn't it, speaking of Bob DeCrescenzo again, Junior Pac-Man, great game. I need to get the box. The box for this game is really cool looking, man. They did a great job. Again, he strikes again, Space Invaders. You don't think you need Space Invaders, but you do. This was the killer rap of the Atari 2600. This is arcade perfect with a lot of little uh, tweaks. Very nice. Robot Finds Kitten. Um... Very interesting game. This was back in the early 2000s. This this game was on a lot of different systems. Hobby programmers were coming up with uh, games at that point. They put one on the 7800. Basically, you take an asterisk and you go around and ask different uh, special characters on a keyboard if they are, or numbers or letters if they are a kitten. And all of them but one will tell you funny little things. And one will say that it's a kitten. That sounds weird. You need a box for this one, too. Rip off. Very cool vector graphic game. Again, Pac-Man Plus. Bob De Crescenzo made this. Uh, a lot of fun. But this thing, the box on this looks awesome. I got some boxing I got to get done. And speak of the devil, I need one for that, too. I, had, I lost that one in a fire. But this is Klax. This is a prototype. It is completely finished. Uh, Lee Kruger from Rescue Soft. I uh, got this back in the early 2000s. They discovered it and released it. Not as fun as Tetris. It's like a thinking man's shit is falling game. Not too bad. Kind of confusing. If you want to know the damn the truth. And I'm sure that you do. Planet Smashers. It's one of the 7800 original games. It's got an advertisement for Alien Brigade. Really bad sound, but I like it. One of my favorite games in the system, Tower Toppler. I'm the world record holder. Yay! Tower Toppler. Beautiful graphics. Check that out. If you play that once and you thought it was too hard, give it another shot. Centipede, man. This is another solid game. Two-player mode. Co-op, one of the best things you can do. Multiplayer on the system. Freaking check it out. Xevious. Really good game, y'all. One of those top-down, shoot 'em up you know, vertical scrolling ones. Excellent. Serpentine. The guy that made Time Salvo. Mike Sarna. Sierna. How do you pronounce it? He made this game. I thought it was going to be terrible. It looked like, like Snake or something. It actually is really good based on an old computer game. 
you got to check this out. This is available at AtariAge.com. Here's another Bob De Crescenzo classic, Space Duel. People rave on that game, like drunk women at Chippendales. Here's a missing prototype that Mitch from Atari7800.org purchased and let us all have if we gave him enough money. That's how capitalism works. Chuck Norris, Missing in Action, movie endorsement. This game is not complete, but yet, if you go to my website, Atari7800forever.com, there is Mitch Orman's complete playthrough of how you can see everything this game has to offer, and you can technically beat it, even though the last boss, all he does is offer you drugs as you kick the shit out of him. One of the best things you'll ever see. Another Bob game here. This is a simple old game called Astro Fighter. Excellent programming on this guy. I'm not a huge fan of this game, uh, but he did a good job. If you like Astro Fighter, you'll love this version. Another Pac-Man hack here. I'm not sure who made this, but this is Pac-Jason. This is a horror-themed. Kind of see. Maybe. Ski mask. Use your imagination. And another Pack Pollux game. This is for review use only, not for resale. So don't you even think about it. Getting my Pack Pollux, another Pac Man hack there, based on some sort of cartoon in France. This is an odd game. This is going to take, a, uh, I guess, Gambler 172, I think, was the guy. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't, I don't know who it was, but maybe it was Gambler. But. He sent out a little game. It was actually a 2600 game, I think, that he made. And we were all supposed to pose. It's almost like one of those pen pal gimmicks. We we're all supposed to pose with this cartridge and then put something of our hometown, take pictures with it, blah, blah, blah. And uh, whatever, you know. It's like a, it went around the world. Well, it got lost somewhere in Europe. Those damn Europeans. And it was gone forever. He made... Uh, for old memory's sake, if you paid him enough money, because that's how capitalism works, a version called 7800 Traveler. Inside is a little game where your briefcase, it's like Go Sub, you can't touch the walls. It's like a little maze thing. If you touch the walls, it stops. Or you die. And I got the eighth one. He, put a, he wrote that in a Sharpie. So there you go with that. Ooh, here's a good run of games. Now the Bob game, Pac-Man, just regular straight up Pac-Man. That's what got him into making games for 7800. He was like, there was no Pac-Man for the 7800 to bother him. That was what got him rolling. His favorite game is Pac-Man Plus. I need to play this game. It, sometimes the ghosts don't turn blue. Sometimes the, the maze turns invisible. A lot of little fancy things. This is for an advanced player of Pac-Man. Uh... The ghosts' paths are not, you know, they're, they're random, supposedly. The 7800 32 and 1 has 32 Atari 2600 games on this guy. This is a, I think, Australian game. I'll check that out. I can't remember. And going back to the Pac Man lore here, this is a Baby Pac Man, but this isn't the pinball game. There was a UKI computer version called Baby Pac Man that came out years and years ago. Somebody did a hack of Miss Pac-Man, made Baby Pac-Man, and here you go with the UKI version of that jive. Failsafe is basically a spiritual uh, sequel to Countermeasure on the 5200. Bob DeCrescenzo made this. A lot of people don't like this because it's slow. I think it's a fucking great game, so don't jump out of a window. I won't do. I don't have too many loose cards left. Tank Command. This is a graphical hack of Tank Command called Midnight Run. Sounds cool, and it makes the game a lot cooler. If you ever played Tank Command, it's pink and marshmallow willy and just lame. This changes the colors to dark colors, brown and that kind of thing. 
still the gameplay problems with Tank Command exist, but at least it looks cooler. Meteor Shower. This is basically Astro Smash uh, that was big on the, I think, the Intellivision. Bob DeCrescenzo strikes again. Atari Age released a red and blue version of this in a very Nintendo moment to get you to pay twice for this. I need to get the red one. One of the best games on a system. It, it really is kind of a hack, but it's really a homebrew. It's the Pac-Man Collection. Number one selling game on AtariAge.com. Tons of different gameplay modes. You can make this almost any type of Pac-Man you want to play. Not Super Pac-Man, not Baby Pac-Man, but Pac-Man Plus, Hackley Man, all those grades. Miss Pac-Man, unbelievable. Here's another Bob De Crescenzo game called Mooncresta. I hate this game, but he actually, the flight patterns in this game, he actually took the code from the arcade ROM, and this is uh, technically, almost, this is arcade perfect. So if you like Mooncresta back in the day, this is the damn jam, and if it rhymes, it's true. I just did a review on the Atari 7800 Forever website, Santa Simon. It's December 1st today. Look at that guy. It's basically a Santa, uh, Simon Says game. And the um, snowman has to register as a sex offender. You can figure that out on your own. Here's another Bob game. Super Pac-Man. That game is wacky. It's got the keys. It's got a giant Super... Uh, it's got a giant Pac-Man. That, that probably was hard to program. Here's another cool one. Save Mary. This is actually technically a 2600 game, but due to some bank switching issues, they couldn't release it as a 2600 game. They have to release it as a 7800 game. So I got this really cool 7800 version. I don't think anybody, not too many people have this, like the graphics that look like this, or at least the artwork, I mean, um, with the girl drowning there. It's really kind of dark. Really cool puzzle game. Save Mary. I'm one of my favorite carts in my collection. Here's Pit Fighter, which is a prototype. It's not very playable. I enjoy how it you can horse around with it. And I think they shouldn't have called it Pit Fighter. They should complete it and make it something else because it's not going to be comparable to Pit Fighter. Pit Fighter is not even that really good of a game. But whatever was happening with the 7800 was fun. I wish they would complete it. Oh, and here's a weird uh, little uh, Video 61 game. Putt. 18 came out this year. Gonna review it soon on Atari7800forever.com. Uh, it comes with comics. Look at this stuff. These guys are nuts over here. Their boxes look weird. They give you comic strips. Good grief. Those guys are just wackadoo. Wackadoo over there. Uh oh, everything's falling over. Call the National Guard. Getting close to the end here. <clears throat> Where'd it go? Oh. Here's a rare game. The spiritual predecessor to Putt 18 is Mean 18. Ultimate Golf. Pretty good golf game. That goes for way too much money these days. And I'm sorry for people who overpay for it. Oops, watch out. See, the Putt game... It's causing me grief over here. I knew he would be a troublemaker. Dark Chambers, like Gauntlet, top down. Pretty cool little adventure dungeon crawler game. Winter Games, probably the only game in the system that's not a basketball game. It's a good sports title. It's got four different events. Bobsled is definitely the highlight. Ooh, one of the best games in the system, Akari Warriors. Two players can play this. You can beat the game. A lot like Commando, a lot more testosterone, a lot more stuff blowing up in this one. Dig Akari Warriors. Really good game. Ninja Golf. Speaking of good game, this one, this one's a killer. Ninjas that play golf. So you can get your ninja certificate. At the end of each hole, you have to fight a, a fire-breathing dragon. A lot of cool stuff. Three different uh, styles of play in this game. 
more I can say about your mother. Matt Mania Challenge. Just reviewed that on Atari7800forever.com. This is a pile of steaming poop. And that's all I'm going to say. Good graphics. The uh, characters in the audience look cooler than the wrestlers. That should tell you something's wrong. On the cavalcade of bad games, Karatika in the box. This one should be a lot cooler. But no. Double Dragon. I like this one. In the box. There he is. Ooh, it looks like he's got a little, uh, there's like a, because he's a little, like a little wearing a little COVID mask there. It's a little uh, scrape on the box, but it's kind of weird. It's the first thing I thought. That tells you how weird 2020's been. I saw that and thought, oh, he's wearing a COVID mask. How freaking weird is that? What we got here? What we got here? We got Galaga. A lot of people love this version of the game. I think it's, I think there's something off about it. Still not a bad game. If you, you know, Galaga and Miss Pac-Man go hand in hand as, as the two survivors of that generation of video games. Pretty good. Jinx, the only game in the system with voice synthesis. It says when you turn the game on, welcome, and you can't catch me. It's a puzzle game. It's worth a look. I'm not a huge fan of it. These oversized boxes must have been a pain for brick and mortar stores, but this is F-18 Hornet. F-18 Hornet. Really cool box art. This is from the Absolute Fellas. Ooh, I need to be careful of that. It's kind of falling apart there somehow. Tomcat. Another flight simulator. Nice graphics. I just don't know if flight simulators should be on home consoles back then. I cheated. I got the the European version of Title Match. I don't have the American version, but I got the European version of Title Match Pro Wrestling in a box. Hat Trick. A lot of people think that game sucks. I think it's kind of fun. It's just real simple and it's fast. All right. I got the black label version of real sports baseball i need to pick up the white version which should be pretty cheap this game's really not very good but uh it says baseball in black and that's that's a rare gimmick and water ski in the box y'all second most rare game or it was at one point i don't know maybe that, i think somebody found a bunch of these and the prices plummeted on um ebay but it's rare, dude. You're looking at rarity. One, two, three, five, six. All right. We're winding down. Crossbow. That's a pretty ubiquitous title. Light gun game. Very good. Dig it. Fight Night. The price of Fight Night shrink wrapped has went up to like $75 on eBay, which is crazy because it's a bad game. But there you go. Cartoony boxers. Donkey Kong Jr. Pretty good port of that game. I dig it. Desert Falcon is one of the most uh, beautiful games. It's a super game cartridge, y'all. Like Zaxxon in the desert. Look at that. Cool graphics, man. This game is underrated, I think. Now that's 10, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9. I'm worried that there's a couple games that are somewhere that aren't where they're supposed to be that I'm going to miss. But this is pretty much it. Super Huey sucks. We'll flip the box back around. That game is terrible. What's worse than a jet flight simulator? A helicopter flight simulator. Get out of here. Cracked. Cracked is a weird game. It's worth a look. But it's not very good. Light gun game, but you have to use your joystick because you got to catch the eggs, and then you got to go throw the eggs at a rooster downtown. Super uh, summer games in a box, but uh, a lot of people love this game. Ooh, USA, dig it! Go for the gold. I think this game is overrated. I sound like Donald Trump when I said that. I don't know why. Donkey Kong, not too bad. 
but there's the the PK version is vastly superior. This game's getting expensive now. And the last game I have, uh, don't open before Halloween 2007 Halloween cartridge. Uh, I didn't intentionally keep this to last, but it did. It does have my name on the box and in the game. Happy Halloween 2007. And uh, I dig it, you know, back then, I guess they, because uh, of what my, my work I did for the website, the, the old website, uh, they, uh, and I reviewed all the games and encouraged everybody, and I knew a lot about 7800. They, they gave me an attaboy, I guess. Uh, not much to this game, it's just basically a flashing pumpkin that says Happy uh, Halloween, and it's got all the our names and stuff that he put in and that he put in there but um check my website out atari 700 forever.com so anyway there's a few games like silver peak and sick pickles and, and a couple of these really strange games that have kind of uh flashed up and went away that i'm trying to get a hold of now uh, i'd like to get a version of tubes on cart even though i don't think that was completed and Anyway, there's an old Simon game and a couple things like that. But there's some new stuff coming out, too. Dra uh, Dragon Cash is, is going to be one of the newest ones. And then Bob's working on a new space shooter. But anyway, check out the new stuff. This is all current as of December 1st, 2020. But check out all the new stuff on Atari 7800 uh, forever.com. And we will update you guys on the new stuff coming out. And uh, hopefully... You'll get some of these titles. If you have any questions or anything about any of this stuff, you can send me a message through the YouTube or through the email link that you can see on the website. It's Atari7800forever.com. Can you believe it? Merry Christmas.